what a beautiful lecture this morning. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful lecture this morning. I hope my sound is okay. It is indeed a beautiful day for a beautiful lecture. My sound is okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today's lecture, Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, and the business of racism. Ha! If there was ever a better example of the business of racism, there we have it, people. If there was ever something that would demonstrate to you how banal and how foolish you have been acting as people. Well, there we have it, Americans. There we have it. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning, Philip. Good morning, everybody. It's just a wonderful day. It's just a beautiful day to have a lecture. Today's topic is super interesting to me. I am having fun with this commentary. I enjoy my commentaries. I've been doing them since I was a young girl doing radio. And so I'm a radio buff. I'm an MC. I'm a disc jockey. Call me what you want. <laughs> I may not answer, but you can call me what you want. <laughs> Good morning to you all. Today's lecture, Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, and the business of racism. If there was ever an example to demonstrate to us Americans the business of racism, there we have it. If there was ever an event to show us Americans how the press, how major media contributes to racial tensions, how major media is an accomplice to the business of racism. It is the machine which supports the business of racism because without the business of racism, the economy goes flat. And it will come to pass, and it will come to veridiction, that regardless of the business of racism, the economy will still flatten. Now, how do we color the business of racism to keep it existing? How do we invent new dramas? How do we invent new clubs? How do we invent new beefs? Who shall quarrel with whom? Shall it be the homosexuals against the black power movement? Shall it be the homosexual against Black Lives Matter? Shall it be the transgenders against the Black Lives Matters? But it's always going to turn around the business of racism and it's the business where humanity is the commodity. Hello. <laughs> what a beautiful lecture this morning. I'm actually enjoying this lecture. This is my field. This is my field. Okay, literary criticism. Okay, commentaries, rhetoric. This is my cup of tea. <laughs> so, having done so much research on this topic, I am more than qualified. I am more than able. The business of racism is the business where the definition of race is twisted to involve and to make it your personal interest that another human would hate you because of your skin color. Not just hate you, in addition to hating you, that another human would go to different various levels to make it their personal business to make your life difficult. But why? Because of the color of your skin, they say. If that is true, if that is the case, then all of what we are going through does not support the premise. It doesn't support the predicate. Listen again to the predicate. Listen again, please. It is said, and most, a majority of the world's population has imbibed this false notion Okay, that there is tension, that there is conflict between groups of people, and it is because of the color of their skin. In addition to the tension, in addition to the conflict, that these persons 
would make it their personal business to go as far as to take steps, as to take actions to make your life miserable. And that is what they call racism. That somebody would go that far and take all these steps to make your life miserable. If that is true, then all of what we're going through, all of that do not support the predicate that this is true. Because we know human beings. Human beings are somewhat predictable for the majority. If indeed a human being hates you because of the color of your skin, that human being will deny you interaction. That human being will go very far and, to, and take actions to separate the space between us. So if indeed a human being hates you, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to see you, they don't want to interact with you. And that is what we've been seeing in the United States. We've been seeing the races and what they call the races, the people of different color, shades, skin variations. We've been seeing them hanging out together, interacting together, having children together, and mingling together. That is the reality which does not support racism. Because if indeed those people truly hated each other, they would stay away from each other. They would build different states. And you would see this state belongs to, these, to the yellow people. This state belongs to the white people. This state belongs to the black people. This state belongs to the red people. This state belongs to the purple people. This state belongs to the green people. This state belongs to the magenta people. This state belongs to the... I'm running out of colors. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of colors. <laughs> oh, the blue people. We mustn't forget. This this that belongs to the blue people, okay? We mustn't forget the blue people. We don't want to discriminate here. <laughs> and all the other colors are in the rainbow. <laughs> Interesting. I love this lecture. This is such a needed lecture. Oh, I just love this lecture. Because what just happened with Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka is a perfect example of racism as a business. And the people who keep promoting racism of, as a business are the mainstream media, like Miami Herald, NBC, ABC, Fox News. Those are the perpetrators. Those are the mainstream media who support the elite. And they are the machine that keep fueling the beef, the conflicts between the races, because the conflict between the races is non-existent. If indeed the races have conflicts, the races should stay away from each other. And that is plain old logic, and that is Mother Nature's logic. We are not going to dispute what I just said, because it's factual. If indeed the races have issues with each other, the races should stay away from each other. But that is not what we do in the USA. We put the races together for conflict, because it is within the nut. It is within the nucleus of the conflict that we create business. Can you say that again, girl? Uh, uh, let me repeat that. It is in, within the nut. It is within the nucleus of the conflict that we create business between the races, that we create, that we create a business, that we create a market. Good morning, Martilis. It is within the conflicts of racism that multi-billion dollar businesses exist. Because if we don't have a feud between the blacks and the whites and the Latinas and the, and, and the Italians and the we're Germans, and the, if we don't have those types of feuds, a lot of businesses do not make money. The newspaper does not get the privilege to cartoon Serena Williams as they did. And they do not get the main population buying those newspapers, clicking on that newspaper uh, um profile let me tell you what the what what the what the most what the most deficient factor is in this equation the most deficient factor in this equation are the niggers of various ethnicities the niggers of various ethnicities and when i say the niggers and i don't mean niggers and i don't want facebook banning me because i'm saying niggers when you look at the niggas of various fractions of ethnicity, you have the African-American niggas. And I'm going to give you these two examples to show you how they, not only do they create conflict between the races, they create conflicts between the niggas. 
So you have the African American niggas and you got the Haitian niggas. It is when you pitch those two niggas against each other that the Miami Herald can print such a cartoon. That the newspaper, that the mainstream media can distribute such a cartoon about Serena Williams. Because all of a sudden, you just pitch a Japanese girl who's black and who's said to be Haitian, okay? Who's said to be Haitian. So they're not going to market her as a Haitian. They're going to keep the underlying story as a Haitian so that the the conflict is between the Haitians and the African-American niggas. Not the real Haitians and not the real African-Americans. No, the conflict is going to be between the niggas. And it is between the niggas where the conflict exists that create the business. Because the Haitian niggas would be like, Naomi Osaka, Naomi Osaka. And then the African-American niggas would be like, Serena Williams, Serena Williams. And there you have it. Not only do we have conflict between the races, and that conflict is generated by the mainstream media, by the people with the most money and the most to afford. You can see examples of that in the minute. I'm going to give you a minute example of that. Take the Haitian community on Facebook. You have a few guys who generate conflict. They generate conflict between the women. They generate conflict between people. And it is when they generate conflict that they make money. It is the same way that the mainstream media, those rich people, they generate conflict on a bigger level. It is when they stir that cauldron of shit. The Naomi Osaka, Serena Williams, now they're, gener they're generating conflict between the ethnic niggas. Let me give you my final resolution on this and then I will depart. For years, I had been doing commentaries and in my commentaries, I describe the African-American niggas as the business, as the product. This is the main product. Because if you have a business, you got to have products to sell. The African-Americans are the main product. They are the top product that the mainstream media, the elite, the industry, they use the African-Americans as a role model of how far the slave can reach. This is what can happen to you if you stay on the plantation and you obey and you, and you worship our gods and you do what we say and you sacrifice your children and you follow our systems. You can reach the Oprah dream. You can reach the African-American dream. Because if you stay a docile slave, if you give us your nut, if you give us your glory, if you give us your respect, if you give us your blood, if you betray your sisters, your mothers, your brothers, if you betray your nation, if you endorse a mentality of demoralization, if you propagate demoralization with your songs, your art, the way that you approach your young people, if you do that very well, you are the primary example of what a slave should be. And we will put you on all the TV screens. We will market you to the world so the rest of the blacks and the rest of the persons of colors, the rest of the non-whites, they can see how far you have gone because you are the model to show how far the slave can go and how much money the slave can make and how rich the slave can become. That is why it's so important for the African American as the primary product to brag. Without the bragging, without the TV, without the screen where you can see him eating and you can see the big rooms, you can see Floyd Mayweather, you can see the others without that visual effect to pull you in. We do not have a marketplace. We do not have business. Business ceases to exist without the African-American niggas participation. Good morning, Suniti Creole. Oh, the Suniti Selahin is the best. Oh, I'm going to pin that. That is so cool of you. How are you, sweetie? How are you, beautiful? This is what we call a Creole beauty, Madame Suniti. The Creole beauty does not have any Caucasian blood in it. Stop playing, niggas. Y'all niggas in New Orleans is tripping. Y'all better see that little, that little Wayne daughter. I don't know what, where's your name? What's her name? Where's your name? That's a Creole baby. That's a little Creole beauty. Just to take a little parenthesis within the lecture. Suniti, thank you for listening. Thank you. 
And this is how I'm, I'm really wrapping this up to show you, to show you the African-American niggas as the product which keeps this business ongoing. Because if the people were to look at the very definition of race, you would see no issues. Why should some nigga I don't even know all the way in Mississippi be my race? Like, what the fuck? Just because they're black, they're my race? Come on, get the fuck out of here. Come on, GDFOH. Get out of here. What's going on? Do you understand the facts of life in this country are very simple? And if you move away from the simplicity of the facts of life, you become involved in the, in the conflict of business. Those businesses create the conflicts to keep the business going. Without the conflict, now the conflict is an invitation because it was always an invitation for the Haitian niggas to join mainstream. So the Haitian niggas have met qualification and it's, it's not even an open market invitation. It's the underlying story as the third world nigga shall always be the underlying story. And with this underlying story, the Haitian niggas feel empowered to endorse Naomi Osaka. But what have the Haitian niggas done to create a Naomi Osaka except for to avenge his own race? Is he my race? I don't know. I would have to check his geography. So Naomi's father's race is from the same southern part as I am. Is he my race? I still don't know. The concept of race is very simple. All right, guys, I have a lot of projects going on, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to take all my projects and to put them into 2019. The first, like um, January of 2019, I will release most of the projects I've been working on. The one thing that I've been working on that is very essential to me is a book. It's a how-to book. That how-to book was supposed to be released back in May. But you know what? I'm so happy I didn't release it because all of the things that have happened have really refocused my audience for this book. I really want my audience to understand how to. And I'm not just you know, just to engage you in senseless reading that you will get nowhere after you read 100 pages, 200 pages, you get nowhere. That's not the type of book I want to do this type of, this time around. I want to do a how-to book that will really how-to. And I don't want to do it for, the, for, for everybody. I want to do it for a specific audience. This is very important because you are looking at yourself, but you are not looking at what they're looking at, you as yourself. You are a commodity. You part of a marketplace. You a slave on a plantation. I'm a slave on a plantation. The difference between you and I is that I'm a slave on a plantation that is sitting on the outskirt of the plantation waiting to get the fuck out. And you are in the nut of the plantation with a hundred thousand of y'all niggas. It's like a eight million of y'all niggas and it is me on the edge of that plantation and i'm trying to get out and all eight million of y'all slaves you're refusing me to go it's not the caucasians that are refusing me to go it's the other eight million slaves who are so loyal to the institutions that the caucasians and the elites have built because the 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 the, the, the real the reality of it is not about caucasians or black or white it's about the the elites and the money it's about the resources. It's about the earth resources and who wants it and who has, who has it and who wants it. Who wants access to it? I come from a group of people who possess the resources of the earth. Am I to deny my resources just to fit into the United Stadium cauldron of shits? I, I don't want to. But here I am in the cauldron of shits and somebody is stirring me along with the other niggas. And... You know, there are plenty of opportunities for me to get out of the cauldron of shits, but it's the other niggas who refuse to let me go because they are so busy with the conflicts of racism. They do not understand. I don't know you niggas. We are not related. We are not of the same race. So with the how-to book that I will release in 2019, the concept of race will be clearly outlined. That's why I'm not going deeper into it right now because I want it to be featured in that book. Because my ancestors were clear on the concepts of race. My ancestors were the original people of the world. If anybody said good morning to God, it was us. So we will not take a secondary notion of who God is. We will not take somebody who heard, I heard, I heard that I heard. I'm not going to take somebody's hearsay on who God is. I'm going to focus on my ancestors and what they say God is. And that will be how simple 
That's how simple it is for me. But for the Haitians who have decided to make it complicated, for the Haitians who are now involved in this Naomi Osaka bullshit, it is just to prove you that those niggas, they, don't, they have not shown the capacity to build. Because they did not build Naomi Osaka. Did the Haitian government build Naomi Osaka? The, all these Haitian niggas who are talking, did they build Naomi Osaka? Imagine if Naomi Osaka had a GoFundMe to raise money to pay for Naomi Osaka's tennis lessons. The same Haitians who are applauding would be the same Haitians calling her a fraud, accusing her of begging the community, accusing her of purging the community. And if the Haitian community so believes in the, in the youth doing well and, and succeeding and becoming a world leader, a world popular figure, why aren't the, why aren't the different sections of the Haitian communities focusing on their own youths in Haiti. Because when you look at the youths in Haiti, the youths are under attack. The young people are under blatant attacks, subliminal, subliminal attacks, and the most apparent attack, the Haitian youths are suffering from pitiless attacks. They are being raped. Young kids, young boys especially, they are being abused. They are being sexually abused. They have been raped. So if the Haitian communities really believe in, in celebrating the success of a Haitian, then why aren't they building the success of their own Haitians in their own country who are the subject of abuse? But they rather focus on Naomi Osaka because that's where the mainstream media demands your attention. Without Naomi Osaka with the underlying story of the Haitian blood, we cannot really pitch her against Serena Williams. We cannot, pick, we cannot portray Serena Williams as a demonic, deranged, out of whack, out of shape black woman, angry. Whenever a black, and this is why I love the, the new platforms of social media, because before you could speak, you could hear my voice, before you could see my face, you would accuse me of being an angry black woman. And so that picture to deny the black woman her own presence in her own hemisphere is just bullshit. It just shows this is a perfect example of racism as a business and generating conflicts, not just between the races, but between the ethnic groups is now the norm. The Haitians have had an invitation to join the niggerhood, and the Haitians did accept the invitations to join niggerhood. And here they are, but I refuse to step in and be part of this farce. If the Haitians truly want to create a positive story, go buy my books. Go buy my books. Suniti Koyola says she is an angry black woman. I'm not sure why. Serena Williams is not an angry black woman. Serena Williams is participating in the business of racism as a willing participant. She makes money participating in the business of racism. I don't see her as an angry black woman. Serena is the type of person who has never raised her voice, and I'm a tennis fan i'm not a and i'm a serena williams fan it's serena's arena and they wanted to dethrone her they brought this other so-called black girl to appease what they would do to her in public so we cannot call it racism because it's another black girl but what they did to her in public what they did to provoke her the name of the game is provocation because i'm an athlete you're talking to an athlete suniti when i'm on the court i remember one time and I've been an athlete for a long time. I remember one time I was on the court. I was only 11 years old, okay? Here I am. Was I 11? I think I was either 11 years old or a little bit older. I'm not sure. Here I am on the court. I'm in Collège Saint-Pierre. I'm playing. And I'm about to serve. I'm about to serve. You know, I'm the, sh I'm the shortest kid on the, on, on the team. I'm the youngest kid. Me and Roberta Celeste, we are the youngest kids on the team. Okay, and here I am, I got my shot, my adrenaline is running, I'm about to take my serve. And there's this vagabond from, college, uh, from, uh, from uh, what is that college bird? There's this vagabond from college bird, and what does he say to me? Rassi, ti rassi. So he starts calling me little shorty, little midget, because, I'm, because it's the adrenaline popping through me. I pick up the ball, and I turn to him, and I say, now get my mom, and then I score the ace. But in the moment that I say, now get my mom, it's because of my adrenaline, because I'm an athlete, I'm in, I'm in the rush 
Okay, if he was in front of the ball, he could have gotten served. Because as an athlete, the people who are athletes, we know what happens to us when we are in the game. In the game, you got to keep breathing because your adrenaline is running. There's so much chemical release happening with your central nervous system all over your body. If you're not able to control that and keep that energy to serve it into the game, anybody can pull you out of that moment. Anybody can create and balance in that moment. And so when the... When the um, empire, when the empire, when the when the empire said that to her, it was out of provocation. It's like another, it's like a Haitian nigga coming to me and says, Oh, Lahini, do you know all Haitians? Have you marketed your book to all Haitians? Why haven't Haitians bought your book? That's a provocation. That's a provocation to get me to lose my focus in the moment. Now, I can either choose to do it willingly, but if I was on the court and my adrenaline was popping and the Empire accused me of stealing, Serena Williams has had a great has had great comportment tolerating when Wimbledon um um US Open, um, tolerating Roland Garros, tolerating all of them, all of these major tournaments. She has been tolerating the workers of those tournaments and those things that they have been doing to her. So here she is in this match with this other girl, and she already knows the mainstream media is just waiting to pitch black girl against black girl, and they're going to do it on a subliminal because she's not even been marketed as a black girl. She's been marketed as a Japanese girl. So all of the mental crimes, all of the, all of the subliminal crimes are done on the low. Because the mainstream media understand it had already done the job to pacify the public, to make the public vulnerable, to receive the products of racism, to receive the products because that's how, that's how business is generated. Good morning, Sheila Parison. Sheila Parison says they don't like foreign people. That's a fact. Sheila Parison, the mainstream media wants to create the conflict because it's all about business. And the, and the business of racism, without adding spice to it, it will not generate as much money. So within the business of racism, now we got the business of ethnic, ethnic groups versus ethnic groups. So it will be to be pitched as if there is a problem with foreigners because they want it to be pitched that way. The Empire had no business talking to Serena that way. Serena did answer him that way because in the moment she's full of adrenaline and the Empire knows that. The Empires know that he should have just apologized and let her move on with her match. But he kept dragging the situation. And that was also done on purpose. I believe the Empire was paid, and that is just my personal opinion. I believe the Empire was paid. I believe he was paid to distract her. And I believe that most of us will never question whether or not he was paid because we're dealing with a so-called black girl against another black girl. And so we will take it as the norm when it's not the norm. Okay, everybody, I got to rush. I've got to run. I hope today's lecture was a bit fun. I invite all of you to visit my website. It's lahinipr.com. Do like my page. It's Lahini. I do have um, a few YouTube channels. Organizing for Haiti is one of the YouTube channels. Then I have the Haitian Voice. I do have a new YouTube channel that I'm putting together that I will be focusing on. And I will talk about it when the time arrives. You guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a super lovely day. Share love with one another. As I will.